Okay, now we're on the intake manifold and what I'm getting ready to show you might seem a bit unusual to some of you. I've been doing this for years uh, to solve certain problems. Uh, in this case, I'm running out of meat on the top and it has to do with this business right here because what you got going on John, I believe, has an old Corvette, maybe a 69 or something, and hook clearance is a problem for him. So he went with the Performer EPS, which by looking at it, looks to be a hybrid between the RPM and the regular Performer. And he's probably done the math on hood clearance and everything. And I wanted to open plenum for the heads because I, you know, I can really make them turn on this is going to hurt some of the upper RPM performance. Uh, how much is really questionable. We're talking about after six grand. I'd say up to that, probably going to be pretty close. But anyway, the problem is I'm fixing to bring the camera over to you. When we try to put a 1206 print on this thing, man, it's going to get awful thin on the roof and we might run into a ceiling problem. So let me show you how I do this. I'm running out of, of uh, tripod height here. I'm hoping that this will give you a good idea. Okay, this is the, um, here, the 1206. Now if we lay this right on top, and uh, I'm going to use the Brzezinski dowel pins. I love Brzezinski stuff. They are the bomb. All right, now look at what we got right here. Let me get over it a little bit better. Okay, look what we got. Of course, that's impressive. That's cool. But when I take just a little bit, I'm just going to do a little dab, just right there to mark our line. Look what we got right here. You see what I'm talking about? Um, I mean damn you know we're not at all far from the top if I measure that I'm probably looking at about a eighth of an inch or so and that kind of bothers me a little bit because uh, if you look at the, the the port on the outside the flange and then there's a hump which busting through don't bother me because I can put epoxy right here and bring it in which I do it all the time um, some of my customers get nervous but remember if you got a little bit of epoxy outside and right here there's no way it's ever going to come loose or vacuum leak that's not the problem the problem is the sealing capability of it right in here but I want as much of the 1206 as I can get so typically what I do is I'll do this number right here. First thing, I'll take the Brzezinski plate, which I think I pointed this out before. It has the 50 thousandths lip, okay, right here to make the intake side smaller and the, and the, and the intake side of the head bigger. So knowing that we're going to go like that, I do believe, yeah, we're on the right deal because this is smaller, this is bigger, all right? So let's go ahead, use the dial pins, and lock the Brzezinski plate up. All right, she's locked. Now, I'll go in here, and I don't scribe the top. Let me back it off a little. Okay. I'm going to go here and I'm going to scribe the sides and the bottom. I'll go ahead and do the other, other one. Look what we got. With floor 1206, with floor but untouched here. This is where it gets a little tricky. I'll come in here and do a mixer matcheroo with the old 1205 Felpro. Once again, use the Brzezinski pins to lock the gasket in place. Okay. Then I'll take, following the gasket,
and hit the tops and pull them into the sides. Now a lot of you out there might be saying, all right, why do you do that for? And I guess it's obvious, I want some pitch right there. Even though, okay, let me, let me show you. Even though, you know, I'm not 1206 on the top, which you can see the extra height. Uh, if you, you know, wrote down my measurements or whatever, you see how much more climb it is. I'll actually cut the port and make the line disappear. Usually I'll try to stay in the line, but I'll go and make the line disappear. So I'll have 1206 width, 1206 floor, but not all of 1206 height. I'll have a little bit. And that's just mainly for sealing capability. Now here's the good trick about this. It serves two purposes. Number one, it makes me feel better about the gasket sealing, and number two, it gives me an, a vertical uh, movement up and down for alignment, because we all know different people zero deck their blocks or deck their blocks. Not all heads are the same, not all manifolds are the same, and what this does here, usually width is never a problem. Uh, I have a method that I tell my customers about moving side to side on how they can line it up, drawing a marker and marking the head right where the divider line is. But the problem up and down can be a problem unless you're going to get into some extensive manifold milling. Well, by going to the 1205 on the height part, we got a bunch of up and down that we're going to be able to do some playing with as that roof area at high RPM is so critical. So the whole key to this, of course, is getting the square of the manifold inside the square of the head. That is the ever so critical thing. I mean, you wouldn't believe uh, dyno-wise some of the horsepower figures that it'll show by not having that turbulent wall hit, that moving column of gas, number one, the first thing it does when that air and fuel comes in and hits this wall is it shortens the area of the port because vortices and turbulent action is hitting. So instead of having a two inch height per se, it's gonna knock it to about 1850 or 1900 a height. So right there, you lose port size. Number two, you got a wet fuel problem on your hands there, buddy, because that vaporized fuel coming in there hits and turns to liquid. So uh, this right here is, Short of having this really done to perfection, which what you'd have to do is take the manifold on and off. There is no mathematical measurement method when you look at three possible variables, block, manifold, and cylinder head decking. There's no magic number that you can do this and do this. A lot of people will claim there is bullshit. The only way you're going to get that kind of fitment is to take it, mill it about 20,000, go back, put it on, mill it 20 or 30. Now, after you do this a bunch, which I have over the years, you start to get a feel uh, by judging the shapes of the, um, the circles, actually. You know, your bolt holes, I can look at that and tell how much of a crescent of a moon and how many thousands just by looking at it. It's just a feel thing. And what my machine shops guys would do for me is I'd just pay them a flat rate of about $150 and then they'd mail it for me however many times I'd bring it in and they'd set it up because I'd done a lot with them. That's how I'd done it to where I got that perfect alignment when I'm hunting for every bit of power. Short of doing that, this is your best bet. You make a mixture 1205, 1206 and it solves a lot of this problem short of spending a lot of time and a lot of money to get that square inside of a square. All right, so I'm going to go ahead right now. I've already, let me tell, let you take a look at this other side because I did something to show you on this so you get the picture. All right, look what we got here. 1206, where my pointer is, 1205. Not a lot of meat to come out, but I do make the line disappear. Now, if I went on to 1206, which I might could, yeah, I could, I might could lay the grinder back and get the angle where I could make a lot of that work. 
But I hate to send Peter and John a manifold with holes poked in it, even though it don't matter worth the damn. Some people look at that and get all bent out of shape and get all worried, even though I've done it a thousand times, and it don't make a damn bit of difference because if you got epoxy here, epoxy on the outside, blend it in good, it is never going to leak. It's still some people don't like it. And I just, you know, I'm just not going all out that way for it. It's just what I choose to do this time. So anyway, I just wanted to go over this 1205-1206 match. And uh, I'll show you when I'm done with it how well it worked, what it looked like. At least I'm going to get the width and the floor 1206 and some of the height to feed these uh, fire-breathing 190 stage 4 heads with uh, tubes. So anyway, that's all of this. I'll show you what the porting looks like when it gets done and how I layer it in. I might show you some of the grinding part that I do right in here. I ain't decided yet, but I've got to move on. Just wanted to show you how I set that up between the two gaskets and the plates.